the top five podcasts which helped Donald Trump win the 2024 election in reverse order. I'm going to start actually with two honorable mentions. It was hard to get just to five. So two quick honorable mentions. The Theo Vaughn podcast. Well, how did, no, I would just do cocaine. That was really, well, yeah. So not just, what, yeah. That's, and that's it was down in, that's down in. So the, the reason this podcast is not in the top five, even though it was actually really good and got a ton of co- uh, hits, is just that I think there's such an overlap between Theo Vaughn and Joe Rogan. If Joe Rogan did not do that podcast, this easy would have been top five, but it was still a great podcast. There was there was one lady that covered the Trump thing. I think it was an Asian lady. During a recent <laughs> podcast with the comedian Theo Vaughn, instead of talking about economy or immigration or health care or the global conflicts, they discussed cocaine addiction. <laughs> Trump, no, cocaine addiction. <laughs> so then we also got that super funny clip. Um, another honorable mention, and I want to be clear, I do not think... I do not really like Logan Paul as a content creator. I think he's very corny. That new product he has, Lunchly, is ridiculous. I think, though, Logan Paul has an audience that is not very correlated to sort of the Rogan sphere. So I think that actually made it popular to get in the eyes of just people that basically do not watch Rogan or any of the podcasts similar to Rogan. No way. We got gifts. Oh, nice. He sells for a lot of money to say. Oh, no <laughs> way. <laughs> oh, thank you, President. You got yeah, President. split it up. Here's... Oh, amazing. Oh, sure. sure. This is... Uh, is, it, is this your mugshot? This is, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> and so, yeah, aside from that, it, just, it was a pretty good podcast. Again, I do... I'm not a fan of Logan Paul, but I do think it was important. Now, number five, the All In podcast. I think this was important because it gave uh, Donald Trump sort of an opportunity to get in front of business leaders and it made him more palatable, more socially acceptable for top Silicon Valley, even top Wall Street people to be publicly in support of Trump. Here we go. Hello, everybody. Hello, Mr. President. Great time. I love that house he has. I love David's house. (laughs) What a house. That made the biggest impression, huh? That Thank you, sir. <laughs> I heard you have a pretty nice house too. Yeah, I have. A, we're in a nice house. We like Although houses. It's only worth eighteen million, right? We're like, I know said? the judge said eighteen million. <laughs> so yeah, it was it was a good podcast. Um, and as I said, it I think it just really helped Trump with sort of the important people, potential donors, or just potential people that may work in a Trump administration, stuff like that. Um, the number four podcast occurred in 2022 was the full send podcast. He also went on it later. I just don't think they were that crucial really, but this 2022 one, I Trump was battling with Ron DeSantis at the moment for the nomination. It was not clear for a while that Trump was eventually it was very clear, but not for a while. And Trump was, there was a period where he was not that cool. Not everybody loved him. He was still very popular, but this podcast blew up and I think it was actually great to sort of re- like show the world again that Donald Trump's very funny and very good at media. Joe Rogan's not a racist. No. Okay. And he's a very interesting guy that people like listening to. Uh, but, you know, they've been hitting him very hard. I did tell him one thing. Stop apologizing. Stop apologizing. What was his reaction to that? When you, when you told him I don't him know. That? Because- <laughs> so, the, 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 it, like I said, it was a, it was a really good podcast. Um, and again, I'm, I'm, I'm specifically referring to the 2022 version of the Full Send podcast. Number three, Andrew Schultz, <laughs> the Andrew Schultz flagrant podcast. I'm putting it at a lot of importance. I'd almost put this podcast, to be honest, at number one, because I think Andrew Schultz, sort of a similar thing to, to Logan Paul, he represents a different type of guy. I don't think he's a guy's guy. To be honest, before this podcast, I considered him pretty cringe. I would have ex- expected him to vote for Kamala. I consider him decently woke, sort of thinks of himself in a very high manner. He kind of reminds me of the guy in high school or college that you kind of like because they're funny, but when your girlfriend's around them, they try to flirt with them, and like they're sort of a shallow guy, but you still like them, you know what I mean? That guy that they're kind of like more of an acquaintance. But I think it represents sort of a version of a guy that, they're again like they're kind of cool. They think about their clothes a lot. Um, I think like sort of a, a a big city like a Toronto, New York, L.A. type of guy. I think they relate more to Andrew Schultz. And I think for them, they might have said even a big like a like a Philadelphia type of person. They might have saw this podcast and just kind of for the first time been like, 
Oh, maybe I will vote for Trump. I don't know. <laughs> Over the last week, I have to, what we talk about funny or sad. I think it's more sad than funny. Yeah. He has one ability I don't have. Yeah. He sleeps. He can sleep. This guy goes on a beat. <laughs> and again, like, again, like, I, I, this podcast definitely changed, um, my opinion of Andrew Schultz. Not that I was like that negative on him, but again, like I, he was not my favorite comedian. I saw it was overall a good podcast with a different audience. Now, number two is the Joe Rogan podcast. It's probably what most people were expecting to be number one based on sheer volume for sure. It's not number one because Joe Rogan sort of set the standard in podcast. People like Lex Friedman, which Trump went on. People like Andrew Schultz, who I just talked about. Theo Vaughn. A lot of these podcasts were they were introduced to the world through Joe Rogan. So I think I kind of did think that if Trump just went on all these other podcasts around sort of in the Joe Rogan sphere, it wouldn't matter as much if he went on Rogan. I still think that. However, I my I was basically proven wrong about how massive the Joe Rogan Trump podcast. Joe Rogan is still by far the king of podcasts. So many views. I definitely think it was very important for Trump to go on this. All right. We're rolling. Good to see Let's you, sir. Go. Here we go. <laughs> um, one of the things I wanted to talk to you about. Just that moment of Trump sitting in that chair where all the other people, like the people like Eddie Bravo and I've, I've sat like Tim Dillon. Yeah, like, I guess Tim Dillon as well, but it was J.D. Vance, the, the VP that went on Tim Dillon. I just think Podcast, Rogan has so Good much Rogan. influence already. Um, and that, that's just the reason I didn't put it number one now. The number one podcast, though, I'm going to give it. You might not even know who this is. Aiden Ross is a giant, and he has a way younger audience. And the main reason I'm putting Aiden Ross at number one is si similar to the Impulsive and the Andrew Schultz thing. I think his audience is incredibly uncorrelated and unrelated to the Joe Rogan audience. Sure, a lot of Aiden's audience is literally too young to vote, but there will be a ton of people that watch his content between 18 to 30 that just do not care whatsoever about politics. Aiden does like cringe gambling stuff, but he also does a bunch of just fooling around on camera. I like if you watch him, he's just he's just like wild, wacky. He deals he has a lot of um rappers that come on his stream, lots of famous people. And um he is entertaining. Like I, I'm generally I mean I don't watch his stream that much at all, but when I do, he's pretty funny. And I just think he hits an audience a massive audience too. Like Aiden's probably worth upwards of a hundred million dollars already. He hits an audience that does not care about politics, I believe, and does really not want, or at least, at least I think, and does not want to watch political content. And the, that's not the case with Joe Rogan. The Joe Rogan viewer, just based on the fact Joe Rogan talks about politics a lot, they're already probably tuned into politics a little bit. And that is not the case with Aiden Ross. I think this was such a smart move. And I believe Baron Trump gets a lot of credit for this. I think I think Baron Trump set this up. I believe it was mentioned in in the in the in the podcast stream, whatever you want to call it. You guys gotta really go out there and vote and vote for the right person. Which is him. Wow, that's 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 a little cool alley oop there. <laughs> you know, it's, it's funny that you do, but now I know why you're so popular because I've been on. And so yeah, like it, it was a really good um, it was a good stream I thought and. I just I'm putting it at number one. I mean, you you could probably for sure argue that Joe Rogan podcast should be at number one just based on numbers alone. But the other thing about the Aiden Ross, the Gen Z audience clips everything. Those clips were going everywhere. It was sort of like the McDonald's thing where the clips were all over the place. When when Aiden and Trump did that interview, that was all over social media for at least two days. That was clipped so many times. I don't know the number, but. I mean, and this kind of proves the point about Aiden, but a lot of these podcasters, because a lot of them have this sort of audience. Look at the difference in the numbers for the Republican from the Democrat. 15 points for Democrat, 2024, 14 points for Republican men ages 18 to 29. That is an incredible number. So with that said, I'll finish the video here, but I'm going that my order. All in podcast, full send 2022, Andrew Schultz, Joe Rogan, and Aiden Ross. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you disagree, I'm sure some people disagree, and that's great. Let's have a debate in the comments. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.